At this point, you cannot tell me anything because I feel just that good about myself. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie and welcome to part three of my breast reduction surgery journey series. So first, before I even hop into this video, I wanna send a huge thank you to all of the ladies who have reached out to me and telling me that they have had breast reduction surgery in the past, telling me all about their journeys, all of the ladies who have reached out to me saying that I have inspired them and they are going to start looking into breast reduction surgery as well. So a huge shout out to all of you ladies. I absolutely adore you. Um, so in my last video, I actually left off at day four post-op. So I had just left the doctor uh, for my post-op appointment with him. And I was still super sore, super fragile, a little better, but still not 100%. So um, I've actually been taking notes every single day. If any updates have happened, if any changes have happened, um, I wrote all of that down. So I'm gonna share all of those notes with you today. Also, I have my four week update appointment with my doctor. So I'm gonna share with you everything that I've asked him at that appointment, his responses. Also, I'm going to provide you with a list of items that I personally suggest to help you with your recovery for your breast reduction surgery. So also just wanna add that today marks my six weeks post-op. So I am officially off of any kind of restrictions. Um, I'm going to go into all of that details, what that means at the end of this video, but let me just tell you that I am overly ecstatic about my results. So in my first video, I said that everyone that I had spoken with who had had breast reduction surgery said it was the best decision that they had ever made. And I can personally vouch for that. I definitely feel the same. It was the best decision that I could have ever done for myself. So I am actually just gonna go ahead and pull out my notes so I can give you the rundown as far as what has happened between four days post-op and now, which is six weeks post-op. So let's just kick it off at day four. When I got home from the doctor, I was still feeling, you know, super out of it, a little in better spirits. I had just gotten my drains taken out and the nurse put bandages right where the drains were. I was instructed that it would take about 24 hours to heal and I would be able to go ahead and take a shower the next day. And I was excited about that because I had not taken a shower since the morning of my surgery. So as far as day five, Day five was the first day that I was able to take a shower. So as soon as 24 hours hit after those drains were taken out, I hopped my butt right in the shower. So what I would suggest is if you do have a spouse or someone who's home with you, who's able to assist you with showering, that is amazing. If you do not have anyone home with you, what I would suggest is getting a shower brush to help you reach those places that you cannot reach by yourself because you are still super tender and do not have that full range of mobility as of yet. So a little assistance is definitely needed with that shower. So I still left my bandages from where the drains were taken off. Um, I left those bandages on while I was taking a shower because my husband was not home at the time and I was scared to take off of those bandages by myself. So I did leave those on, but I did get in the shower and I felt so much better once I got out. Also, this was the first time that I really had a good look at my chest since the surgery. So the day before I did go to the doctor, I was able to see them in the mirror. However, you know, you're still in the doctor's office. You're really not super comfortable there. So while I was at home on day five, I was able to look in the mirror, see exactly what everything looked like. And I don't know, I, I felt like my boobs were manufactured my breasts looked like they had been made in a factory they looked like barbie doll boobs <laughs> they were super swollen and still very numb just very high and i was not used to that so pre-surgery i was like a triple d slash g and um he took off quite a bit so 
I have not gotten measured for bra sizes as of yet, but the goal was to get down between a C and a D. Breast reduction surgery does include a lift as well. So everything is raised, nipples are pointed right out, and everything just looked very, very manufactured to me. So still stitches around the nipples. Um, and I did have the anchor incision. So under my breast and then straight up from the bottom and then around my nipple as well. So also, since this was the first time me taking off bandages and everything and um, changing all of that dressing, my nipples were very, very, very sensitive, which I was really not mad at because one of the side effects for breast reduction surgery is either you can lose all sensation in your nipples or you can have a heightened sensation. And I have a heightened sensation just the material on my bra, the material on my shirt, just rubbing across it, it was very, very, very intense. But I'm not mad at it because I would rather have more of an intense sensation than no sensation at all. So I will take what I can get. <laughs> so let's move on to day six. So day six, I was able to get the bandages off uh, from where my drains were. So my husband was able to just peel those right off as soon as I looked at where the drains were, it had completely closed up. So it is true, it only takes about 24 hours and everything is all sealed up from where your drains were. Um, also on day six, I did try to cook dinner for my family and it just took so much out of me. I had to stop in the middle. Please do not push yourself. If you are not feeling up to something, just don't do it, relax. This is your time to rest and recuperate. So please do that for yourself. Do not try to push yourself like I was trying to do. I was trying to get up and do things that I have normally done on a day-to-day -day basis when I really should have been sitting my tail down and just relaxing. So that brings me to day seven. So day seven, I was feeling a little bit less fragile, still not 100% myself, but a little bit less fragile still feeling like you know these breasts that are attached to me are not really mine if that makes any sense um a little disconnected from them it just felt like they were someone else's boobs on my chest if that makes any sense i have more range of emotion i was able to lift my arms a little higher so i think i was like up to here on day four I was able to raise my arms a little higher by day seven. Um, I was able to cook dinner. Uh, car rides were getting a little better. If you remember from day four, car rides were a complete hot mess. Uh, but by day seven, a little, a little better. Um, still not able to wear the seatbelt right across my chest just across my lap, which I don't know if there's any way around you know, having it across your chest and feeling comfortable. It was just not comfortable for me to do so. Um, but the bumps in the car ride are still a lot. It's a lot. So, but by day seven, it was getting a tad bit better. Also on day seven, that was the first day since my surgery that I did not take a nap. So I had a lot of energy, um, which is probably why I cooked dinner for my family. But again, take your time. If you need to rest, sit down and rest. Um, don't push yourself too much. On day eight, I did cook breakfast for my entire family. I took a nap immediately after that. I just did not, I was not feeling it. So the day before, day seven, I did not take a nap at all. So I was probably, you know, exhausted from the day before as well. So on day eight, I took a nap immediately. Also on day eight, I did notice some bleeding under my right breast, which really alarmed me because with my doctor's appointment from day four, my doctor told me it is normal to see like a discharge, not necessarily blood, but a little bit of discharge, a little bit of separation in the skin. And I don't know, the bleeding just kind of threw me off. So I did go ahead, change the bandages as much as possible. Um, just to make everything clean and sterile. I just did not want an infection. My number one thing is I did not want any kind of infection. So on day nine, 
is when I had this epiphany that I am not gonna be able to sleep on my side for another five weeks. So at this point, it's only been a week post-op and it just kind of depressed me. I am a side sleeper or a stomach sleeper. I'm also a cuddler at night. My husband holds me the entire night while we are sleeping. And at this point, I am a little depressed that I still have to sleep on my back like a mummy for the next five weeks. It was just a sad, a sad thought that I had. So I just wanted to write that down. Also the sides under my arm are no longer sore. So where my drains were taken out, initially it was super sore. Um, the incision closed up. However, it was sore and still very numb under my arm. Also my breasts are still numb. They're still swollen. Sleeping at night on my back, it just feels like dead weight on my chest or a sack of bricks on my chest while I'm sleeping. So it's super uncomfortable sleeping on your back if you're really not used to it. Plus just having that tissue that's numb and swollen on right on your chest, it's, it's kind of a lot. So on day 10, it's the first time that I drove by myself. Still a little uncomfortable, but you gotta do what you gotta do, right? Still the bleeding under my right breast. Um, also, this was the day right before the 4th of July, and we had a family barbecue over at my mother-in-law's house um, to celebrate the 4th. So we were outside, sitting in the heat, in the sun, sweating and baking. Would I do? not to recommend do not do that <laughs> if you can hold your surgery off until the cooler months i definitely would recommend that just because with summer you know you're still trying to be out trying to enjoy the weather trying to do summer things and incisions and sweat do not mix and i'll get to why in just a moment so on day 11 um is when i ran out of my medication so oxy uh, was the medication that they prescribed me once i had my surgery um they do not refill that prescription once you are out so you are out but you are still able to take like ibuprofen and tylenol so i was still taking those pain medications um probably just only at night or as needed also itching has started at this point so day 11 uncontrollable itching and it's probably because i still have this surgical glue on i was out in the heat the day before and everything is just starting to itch at this point. So on day 12, still itching. Also, I noticed trapped fluid under the surgical glue on my left breast. So right under my areola, like right where this incision is going up is where I noticed some trapped fluid and it freaked me out because I told you all the number one thing that I'm trying to avoid is any kind of infection. And I thought that's what that was. So the following day is when I called the doctor's office. I was trying to see if I could get in to see my doctor. A nurse called me back and was able to get me into an emergency clinic um, just to, you know, get everything checked out. So I went, the nurse was able to remove majority of that surgical glue and then also explained to me what was happening with my left breast. So she told me that it was not an infection, praise the Lord, but it was delayed healing. So delayed healing is a completely normal post-op complication. It's one of the most normal post-op complications that you can have. So basically what it means is that that part of the healing is delayed more than the rest of your healing. Basically, my skin was starting to separate just a little bit. I was getting a little bit of fluid, which is exactly what the doctor told me was completely normal on day four. However, that just went completely over my head. Did not even remember that. Completely disregarded it almost. So don't do that. If you do see kind of skin separation or anything, any kind of discharge, 
you do not need to be scared that it's an infection. All you need to do is put a little Vaseline on it and it will heal up on its own. So basically what they sent me home with was some antibiotic ointment, which I was supposed to use for about five days and then switch over to the Vaseline. Also, I was sent home with little pads of glue remover. And the nurse basically told me that once I get out of my shower, uh, while the glue is still kind of wet and hot and moist to use those little pads to remove that extra glue that was still on there. She also told me that if my symptoms worsened or did not improve in a week, to go ahead and give my doctor a call. So by day 14, I was still nursing that delayed healing. By day 18, I did notice some healing. So the wound was starting to close. I was able to remove some more of that surgical glue. The right breast where it was bleeding a little bit had completely stopped. So basically there was delayed healing on my left breast where the skin was starting to separate and then right under my right breast where it was having that little bit of blood. So also my right breast was looking so much more normal and so beautiful as compared to my left wrist, which is still having that delayed healing. Healing just a little bit, but still at a slower rate than the right breast. Day 20 was actually the first day that I felt comfortable with no gauze, no kind of bandages or anything, just a bra by itself. Now hold that thought because things are gonna get sticky in just a moment. But I felt comfortable at that point. But by day 25, I was back to the gauze because my wound started to open up again. So we're back to square one, basically. So I'm still using Vaseline every single day, just trying to make everything moist. The most common misconception is that when you are trying to heal your wounds, you wanted to keep everything dry and just basically scab up. You do not want to do that. You want to make sure that everything is super moist and moisturized so that everything can heal up very nicely and smooth and those scars can just go ahead and fade on their own. So I went back to the gauze, still have to wear them. So by day 28, I noticed healing again. So everything started to heal up again. This area under my left breast started to scab up and heal like I needed it to heal. It was starting to look really, really nice. So I'm thankful for that, that I did not have to go back to the doctor um, for any kind of infection or for the delayed healing. Um, I was also starting to get used to my new breast. Um, like I said before, they were looking like manufactured, made at a factory Barbie doll boobs, but now they're really starting to look like natural breasts. One question that someone asked me was, have you ever had any kind of regrets during the healing process? There were a couple of days that I looked down at my breasts and with the stitches and everything and how it just looked not like I was expecting them to look. I was feeling a little regretful, like, you know, what did I do? Was this really worth it? What are these going to look like after this healing process is over? But I'm so happy that I just stuck through it and went through this entire process. It is definitely a process. Let me just jump to my four week post-op appointment with my doctor. So. At this doctor's appointment, he basically had me get undressed from the waist up so that he could see everything. Um, he told me that I was healing extremely well. I did tell him about that little scare that I had and he told me, you know, same thing that the nurse told me before, everything was completely normal. Still use that Vaseline on my breast to just make everything heal even more. Um, he, I did ask him about the itching. so. At this point, my breasts have been itching for quite some time now. And it's not necessarily an itch that you can scratch on the surface of your skin. It's like itching on the inside underneath my skin. <laughs> so there's no way to scratch it. There's no way to really get to it or relieve this itching. Um, so he did tell me that there is some medication that I can take. However, it would make me super loopy. So he wants me to just stay away from that and just basically tough it out. 
He also told me um, when I am feeling that itching sensation to just go ahead and massage my breasts. He said, don't do this in public, but <laughs> go ahead and just mas gently massage your breasts. So I have been doing that. I'm, I'm at six weeks and I'm still experiencing this itching sensation, which he did tell me is basically all of the nerves just trying to reconnect. So it's just a healing process. It's part of the process. Um, so I have been doing the massages, haven't really been taking any kind of med medication at this point. Swelling has completely gone down numbness is gone at this point so i will say that that probably happened around week four the numbness and the swelling has gone down um no longer feeling like bricks on my chest while i'm sleeping so i'm getting a little more comfortable in my skin um also week three is when i started to feel a lot better in car rides so i'm able to take a car ride with the seatbelt across my chest and feeling perfectly fine. So also at this four week appointment with my doctor, he told me that um, I needed to make a follow-up appointment with him between two to three months. So I did go ahead and make it for three months out. And then also he told me it's okay to increase my physical activity. And then at six weeks, I will be off of any kind of restrictions and I could do whatever I want. So I could sleep on my side at that point. I can pick up my daughter at six weeks, which I was super excited about. I have not been able to pick up my daughter in six entire weeks. She's two and a half. So you can imagine how she's been feeling about that. I've been able to like hold her while I'm sitting down or um, just give her hugs and things like that. But to physically pick her up, I have not been able to do so. So yes, progress. So I will say at this point, at six weeks, my breasts are no longer feeling like foreign objects on my chest. They look absolutely amazing. I have almost no scarring on my breasts at this point. Um, so I have not been using any kind of fade cream or scar cream or anything on them, just Vaseline and um, some oil from Ancient Cosmetics, but I'm gonna get to that in just a moment. But that's pretty much it. And everything has been healing super, super nice by itself. So what I will say is one suggestion is just let, let the healing process do what it do. <laughs> because it's going to heal by itself don't try to rush the process going out buying a whole bunch of stuff and applying that because everything is going to heal how it needs to heal in the time frame that it needs to heal let me also talk about my back pain has that improved i will say that my back pain has improved about 75 percent I still feel like I need to work on my own posture by myself. My doctor said he was able to send me over to more physical therapy if I chose to do so. However, I think I'm gonna decline that and just do some home exercises by myself, things that I learned from physical therapy the first time around. So back pain has dramatically improved. Confidence, I feel so good about myself at this point you cannot tell me anything because I feel just that good about myself. Um, I am able to fit in clothes that I had completely given up hope on. I am actually going to insert a video um, of my before and after so that you can see. What I did was I put on outfits the day before my surgery and then the same exact outfits on about a month post-op. So take a look at this. She wanna know me, I stay low key, I'll gas no breaks, baby, let them hold sleep. Body on to make your girl OD. I get in my way, never out of my lane. Feel like you the one and I'm on one. So what is gonna be? Baby squad up, we finna go deep. Is you riding on a team? Got what you need. Baby, won't you keep me company? Give me something to do when I get lonely. I got something for you when we get home. If you let me put it down.
that was my before and after. As you can see, it's a dramatic difference from before and after. So again, prior to my surgery, I was about a triple D slash G and now I'm about a C slash D. So now that I'm at my six weeks, I plan to go to probably Victoria's Secret or something so that I could get measured so I could get some little cute and dainty bras. I'm really excited about that. I'm excited to sleep next to my husband and him hold me. It's been such a long time. Also me just scooping up my daughter and holding her and picking her up. I'm really looking forward to that as well. I'm looking forward to getting active and um, starting to exercise more. So let me get into these items that I definitely recommend that you pick up to assist you with your post-op surgery. So here are a couple of items that I definitely recommend that you pick up. So first is the shower brush. I believe I got this from Walmart. So I'm gonna put a link down in the description box for this. So initially when you're first able to take a shower, your range of motion is not gonna be completely there. So you are gonna need some kind of assistance to reach those places that you are not able to reach. So this will definitely assist with that. Also, non-stick gauze. So these are the ones that I used. These definitely helped me when I did have the delayed healing. They don't stick to your wounds. I recommend that you pick up maybe three boxes or so of these so that you could just change these out as needed. This oil from Ancient Cosmetics, it is Tropical Pineapple Scented. And this is completely organic and natural oil. I'm gonna put a link in the description for this oil. So I started using this um, about a few days after I noticed that delayed healing and went to the emergency clinic. So I was applying that Vaseline, but also a little bit of this oil as well, just so that everything can heal up naturally. And also it makes you look really, really good with this oil on everything smooth and shiny and you're also healing as well. So definitely recommend this. Now I did jump the gun and uh, picked up some scar cream. So I got two kinds. So Bio Oil here and Mederma. I have not really used either one of these as of yet. However, I do know that people swear by these. So I may start to use these maybe in a couple of weeks or so. Um, but like I said, everything is already healing up super duper nicely on its own. So may not even need these, I don't know. And I talked about these in my second video. However, a tray of some sort. So while you're recovering um, in bed so that you can eat your meals, if you need to work on your laptop or something like that, you can do so comfortably. And with this tray, the legs, uh, fold out as well. So that's really nice. And then also this little back pillow. So this really helped me with my recovery as well so that when I did want to just sit up, I could do so comfortably and just have some kind of support on my back while I was using my tray to eat my meals or work on my computer. So also I did use two different kinds of bras in my recovery process. So as soon as I was able to get out of that pink bra, I did so. <laughs> I actually switched between maternity bras and some Fruit of Bloom bras that I found on Amazon. So the reason that I say maternity bras is it has that snap up here that you can just snap down and then just change out your gauze and your dressings when you need to. So that was super convenient. Uh, with the Fruit of Bloom bras that I picked out from Amazon, it snapped right here in the front, just like this shirt that I'm wearing right now. Snapped right there in the front, so again, easy to change out that dressing. Also with those bras, they were super tight and compressed, so they just held everything in really, really tight, which is very needed in this process. You wanna make sure that everything is tight and secure so that everything heals the way it needs to heal. I think that is it for this video. I gave you a ton of information. I do apologize that this video is super duper long, but again, this is going to be the last video of the series. So if I did not address something that you have questions about, please leave me some questions down in the comments below. 
leave some nice comments for me. I am over the moon at my results and all of the support that I have been getting. I definitely appreciate all of you. Um, but I think that's it for this video. Again, if I did forget anything, if you have any additional questions, leave that down in the comments. I'm gonna put everything down in the description box that I showed you today as far as the items that I recommend. Um, but that's it. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.